Hey guys, welcome to the last episode before Christmas. Christmas is in a couple days. I hope you've been good all year. Uh, maybe you've been so good that Santa's going to bring you Scott H. Byram. The Reverend Scott H. Byram. I didn't know that that was a fact. But anyway, um, this is the gospel according to Scott H. Byram. Yeah, wake up sinners. So anyway, this episode is called Beauty is Only Box D. You see this box? Isn't it pretty? It even fits a license plate. You see how thin it is all around? Now, you all know that I like these Camacho, especially 60 by 6 boxes. They're thick, they're durable, and I have shown you that these boxes will actually crush boxes like this physically. Now I got some good news and some bad news. You know what? I'll give you the good news first. Once again, you are going to learn off my mistakes. The bad news is this, and again it's for me. You remember this? I've been working on it for a couple months. This old vintage white owl box. Start off, let me, lack of preparation, start off looking like this one. Pretty shabby. But I did a couple episodes where I reinforced it. I keep disappearing here. Reinforced it. Did everything to make it perfect. And then guess what? When I started bolting the neck through and stuff, the box came apart. In spite of all the reinforcement I did, in spite of everything I did, and now I got a junk guitar that I'm going to have to redeem myself by transferring that neck onto a Camacho box. You know the saddest part about all this? Yeah, the saddest part about it is, is yeah, I really didn't need to use that box because, yeah, I got a few Camacho boxes stashed away. So who's the fool now, huh? So, instead of trying to be fancy with this old box, I could have been practical with the box I know and trust for a long time, the one I've been telling you about forever. Um, but speaking of fancy boxes, I got a question from one of my subscribers named John Candle out of British Columbia, A eh? Shout out to you, John. Uh, John's asking questions about, let me put this away. I really don't care if it falls over because it's shot. About using these fancy boxes that we get. Um, they're pretty and all. And you know, my stuff looks pretty yard sale -y. There are other people who make sure that everything is perfect on these boxes. But his question was, when you start putting necks into these boxes, what is the effect? And that's what this episode is about. So, give me a like, even though I've led you astray. That's all right. I'm repenting with Scott H. Byron. You know, I got an extra one of these. So if you pay attention to my episodes, there might be a question about something. And you might get one of these, but I'll let you know when that is. Uh, but thank John Kendall out of British Columbia for bringing you this episode today. Give me a like, give me a dislike. Hey, metric hater. Hey, deck screw hater. Let's go to the bench. All right, I got to get a better production team than just me. I got my scale, my 25 and a half scale. Remember this one? We made another episode. Anyway, remember the questions I asked you. There might be something in it for you like that right there. Anyway, I've got this pointer here. So what we're going to do now that we're at the bench is I'm going to show you what went wrong here um, and how it would affect other builds I've done. You remember Punkin and the Mr. Airplane Man guitar and uh, the Reverend Peyton uh, Chevy 350 guitar. Um, those have had some issues based on the neck thickness and what kind of strings I can run. Anyway, um, we're going to take a look at starting here with this box and I'll show you what went wrong. Okay, let's pull some stuff off of here. I got the strings unwound. Um, it come time to get everything together and see I got everything wired up. It's all good. Um, remember I put these pillar blocks in so I could double these jacks up here. The front end is all reinforced. We got everything underneath here. It all turned out well, but when I started running the screws together, or the for the bolts to go all the way down through and up through the bottom, then this box started to cave, and that happened right here and right here. And once that started, uh, short of gluing this on here and hoping that it holds, it just wasn't going to hold. So sometimes you got to call it a day. 
and that's what it is. I think I'm going to take this box up to that secret location. I'm going to film and leave it there. And then when you get there and find it, you'll be able to sign this box. It would probably be nailed on a telephone pole, but I'll let you know more about that later. All right, this annoys me, but nothing can be done. I'm going to cut the wires off of the piezo, and I'm going to cut the wires off everything that goes to the coil and get the top of that box loose. There we go. I'm going to pull all this off. And uh, like I said, you'll see this hanging somewhere. If you ever run across it, sign it. Uh, but now that this is loose, I've cut these what was left of those two sections off. And I can pull the neck right out of here like so. I'm, I'm going to undo um, this little holder that I've done and make sure I've got enough slack on this piezo connection so I can use it again on the next guitar and then you see I've got that that ground that goes to the Altoids tin there I'm going to want to use that again too getting clumsy here anyway so now I'm just going to reuse this I won't need these support blocks here, so we'll knock them off. Remember I told you that I was going to glue them on lightly? Now I can just take a file here, or run this over the belt sander, and knock that glue stuff down. And then you see these holes that I've drilled in here? I'm going to take some of this doweling that I got, and I'm going to fill those up with dowels. That's why I always am careful with the uh, size drill bit I use. But I'm going to drill this in or, or make sure that these drill holes are all glued in with doweling. And then this will be ready to go on to a different box. I am going to keep all the Holly Springs matchbooks. I've had part of one become a casualty here. But remember, these are decals. See the graphics episode. There will be a uh, an iCard link up to it right about there, right about now. I can still use the nut the tuners, uh, the 61 highway badge, and this Holly Springs map right in here. Of course, Tammy signed it. And then we've got Relic Wood from Mississippi Fred McDowell, Alan Wilson, and Reuben Lacey's Church. Hey, that might be where we're going next week. All right, now you remember the artist, when I was building this, uh, provided this uh, gold foil uh, humbucker pickup and wanted it mounted in the bridge position uh, close to the floating bridge here. So when I strip all this stuff off and put it on this Camacho box, I'm going to grind this off. I, yeah, that can go. It always does. And find some kind of graphic of maybe uh, something to do with Holly Springs, which means Junior Kimbrough uh, and um, or, or one of the burn sides. And maybe get an old gig poster and put that up here. But Anyway, it's a matter of kind of lining this up. Now, it's going to be easier for me with this box if I put the, the end of the tail piece right like so. And then, of course, I take my scale measurement, put it at the end of the knot, and figure out that that floating bridge now, I should put my arm in front of the camera more often, is going to end up about right there. After that, it's just a matter of drilling holes for the sink drains that I always use and, and putting the volume control pots here. I'm going to have to use thicker uh, pots and uh, drill in the floating bridge. Again, there's an episode for that where the iCard is right about now. Um, the one thing that we have to pay attention here to is I can cut into the box right here in this area and let this fretboard go into the box and be above the box here. So that's uh, something I'll end up doing rather than flush cutting it here. So this is really pretty uh, uh, an easy fix, but it's kind of just making this box, which is shiny and new, uh, look like something that's kind of old and beat up like this guitar was going to. Okay, let's get back to the question my friend John Kendall asked me, and that is, how do you make the neck work on these thinner boxes? So let's talk about that a little bit. I've I've done this in the past and had a couple problems, but um, let's take a look at what I like to do. First, 
we have the neck board and then I have the heel that comes in this would be sticking out of the guitar about here I gotta watch my camera angle here spin that down just a tad there we go it's gonna come out about there and then your fingerboard so you got about that much thickness now you want that fingerboard to be above can you see that above the top of the box so you got plenty of room on one of these boxes when you start getting into a Patron box again you want the fingerboard above the neck um, that's right on the bottom of that box you see it that's not good and then this one it's even thinner so you put the fingerboard above the box and look you're already past can you see past the bottom there it is past the bottom of the box so um, on a box like this you're basically left using one neck board thickness and that's going to affect how much uh, you can do with the strings and stuff especially these uh, people that are playing a run and bass now the reason I kept this box is because look at that it fits a license plate really nice um, you even got room for your potentiometers and stuff here and for your bridge and stuff so that's the reason I kept this box but I pretty much use kits when I do license plate guitars now so let's take a look couple a look at a couple guitars I've built that have all three setups and what it meant in the end okay I think y'all met some of these guitars before uh, there's Punkin, um, the Mr. Airplane Man guitar, and the Reverend Payton guitar made out of uh, Chevy 350 motor-sized pickup truck parts. So let's take a look at the necks of each one of these and what happened when um, the box might not have been just right. Alright, Punkin was a Halloween-themed guitar. Imagine that. We got... Uh, matchbooks on the neck that go with witches and black cats and stuff but the cool part about this was it had a North Mississippi All-Stars gig poster with a pumpkin on it I end up getting Luther and Cody both to sign this but I need you to pay attention here this is a robusto Toro tubos box t-u-b-o-s box and it's very thin you see that it's only one neck board thick there's not enough room there to put another one on without it coming off the bottom I'm messing up here let me move this up just a little bit like so you see that so it's sticking out so I only use one neck board so what happens if you only have one neck board here when you start stringing these things up with heavy strings the string pull in here is going to cause the neck to want to bow up this way and your action starts to get pretty high at the 12th fret so um I wouldn't build another one like this. This was a three string. Uh, three strings are easier. Uh, they uh, put less tension on the neck than, of course, four strings. And then I guess you can go to down a set instead of using the big 46 or 56 or 60 string that I typically use. You would drop down one string, which gives your guitar a higher tone. And that might not be so desirable, but at least it'll take pressure off your neck. Now, this guitar. Uh, Reverend Payton guitar uh, same thing going on here one board thick and when I started putting the strings on it started bowing so I took a, a set of shelf brackets or corner brackets and drilled them in there to keep the neck from bowing now that's not <laughs> the most desirable thing but it worked out and of course I advanced um, ideally in the end you would really want this going through like this all the way through the rest of the body but hey nice guitar nice gig poster signed by the band thanks Rev finally I evolved to the point where I was using floating bridges good pickups um, this is the last I think the last coil that Darren Dukes built thanks bud you really helped me out in uh, in this hobby but we've got the fingerboard here um, about halfway up the neck the action isn't really high we've got the neck board rounded off here uh, routed down and smoothed out and then we got a heel board here and that right there is the way all my guitars do now and uh, so if I guess 
at the end of the day, if you're going to use a thinner box, you just uh, maybe work one of these, uh, another one of these down that will fit into a, uh, a planer or something like that. Um, but you can always um, take um, the gauge of the strings down or do something like that. But you're really trying to avoid bow of the neck. So I hope you're learning something from the mistakes I've made in the past. <laughs> Okay guys, so the moral of the story here is it's good to have a box that's thick enough to take your neck board right here, a second neck board, and your fret board. That's going to give you plenty of strength. Now if you don't have that, you're going to end up using lighter strings, maybe making a ukulele or something, because most of the people I build for, they want that thump or bass string like this, and they're doing stuff like this. It's like they're doing a running bass line. Then. So, it's that simple. Thanks again to my friend John Kendall up in Canada uh, for asking for this information. I hope you all have a happy holidays. I'll see you soon. I'm going on a road trip uh, next week, and I'm going to film something really cool, and I think you're going to like it. So, happy holidays, and see you next time.